what you did yeah. in 82 is remarkable considering what had been going on in your personal life as well around the semi-final and such a, a, a an unimaginable tragedy where you lose your daughter Celine Mary the weekend of the All-Ireland semi-final that's right that's right that Friday evening um I was out cutting the grass and I, I came in and I just came in and uh, Anne said to me she wasn't feeling well and I said to her well, do you want to go down to the to the hospital and she decided then that she'd leave it till the morning and um she, we went down then in the morning and um, <clears throat> so we went into the hospital Jamie and, and Stephanie were in the car you know and I was trying to you know you're trying to be in the hospital and you're trying to mind the two in, you know what I mean mm-hmm. and they were young at the time and uh, so like Anne was Anne was told that that was actually told that, that you know Celine had passed away and so she, she decided then that look at there was nothing could be done, like, you know what I mean? So she said to the nurses or the doctors, like, you know, because she said, I, I don't want to tell tell uh, Richie he's, he's you know, in all Ireland semi-final tomorrow. So, like, I went off and, and I got uh, Jamie sorted out and I got uh, Stephanie. Um, we, we had great friends in Carrick and Tool, Tom and Tess Whelan. So they, they took the tube for the night and uh, I went up the next day uh, on the train to, to Dublin, went across to the the Ashling Hotel, that's where Kilkenny were. And uh, so <clears throat> I said to Paddy Grace, I, I, I told Paddy, he was Secretary of the County Board, and he said, look at Richie, um, just go there and make as many calls as you have to make. He said, uh, you, you, you needn't come to me. So look, at I rang, I rang, and uh, I rang Carrie Tool uh, first, uh, just to see with Jamie and, 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 and Stephanie, okay? And uh, Tess, Tess said to me, she said, look, at Tom has gone in for and she's, she's coming out. So I, I thought everything was fine. And uh, I played the game, came back and got a bite to eat and jumped on the train, you know. But <clears throat> the minute I uh, landed in Cork, like Tom and myself had been fierce friendly, f- uh, fierce close, like, and uh, Tom was just so quiet going out in the car. I just, I, I knew, the nearer I got to carry, uh, carry tool, I said, there's something, something not right, you know. So mm. look, it was tough, it was tough. It was, it was a difficult, um, a real difficult week now, to be honest with you, you know, because <clears throat> Celine Mary was born on the Tuesday, you know, and like we took her back to Kilkenny to bury her, like, you know, so look, it was it's just a kind of part of your life that you, you don't forget, like, you know, you know there, there, there wouldn't be a week that it wouldn't kind of flash through your head, like, you know. So. What a burden your wife Anne took upon herself that weekend, knowing and coming from a GA background herself, the importance of the game and your life but obviously so secondary to what's going on, but actually saying, you know what, let him have this, let him have this moment. Yeah, look, it was a, it was a huge decision for herself. And, uh, but like she said to me several times after, she said, uh, like, th- there was nothing could be actually done at that particular stage to be different if they were. She mm. said, if they were, t- you know, you, you would have been informed straight away. Like, you know, but she felt like that, look at what, what had happened, happened. And, uh, She's like she just look. It was a it was a big call for herself to do. Like you know, and uh, but look at we we look back on it and you know we have five five you know five kids. But look at she'd always be there. You know, and you'd always I like that 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 Sunday. Uh, probably I could nearly relive every every minute with you know looking back on it now, not knowing what I I didn't know. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You know the fact that I was coming back down on the train and I was after scoring one three I think in that semi final and I was really proud of myself and you know coming from a club that, that you know that I was the first representative from the parish like and uh, you know I just everything was fine and a couple of hours later the whole thing unfolded like you know mm-hmm. so uh, at the end of the day it's, it's only a game isn't it and yeah. there's more important things out there. Had you spoken about that as a family before you sat down to write the book? Um, actually, no, um, Nathan, to be honest with you. Um, I Obviously, I was aware of, of Celine Mary. I, I I wasn't actually aware of the circumstances, um, you know, and that's, I suppose, it just a credit to ma'am, I suppose, you know, in, in a way. Um, you know, I suppose maybe times were different back then and, you know, for her to, I suppose, she was that much of a supporter of dad's career and of all our careers, you know, I'm, I'm sure she would have done exactly the same for any of us. And, you know, it was a, it was a huge time in their life. I, I, and I suppose Jamie and Stephanie were quite young at the time as well. You know, they probably didn't know what was going on either, but um, certainly, you know, you, you, you can't, you can't put words on that really, mm. you know, what ma'am, what ma'am took upon herself. Um, you know, but as I said, it's just, uh, it's, 
it's typical of ma'am, put it that way. It's typical of ma'am to kind of, you know, put things to the back burner while, you know, if dad was playing or if any of us had a big game the following day, you know, she'd she'd carry that burden until until after. 